So here we are again, back by unpopular demand. And back after doing uh, quite a bit of homework because uh, it's time for me to look at some more Nightwish and Nightwish needs me to be on top of my game and needs me to do a bit of research and a little bit of work. It's, it's as I've continued to do this and learn through the process, it's clear that I need, before I look at songs that are not familiar to me, I need to dive into them a little bit, Just make sure that there's something in there that I can get my teeth into, that I can add value to. And while I was doing that, uh, fully intending tonight to do a completely different song, um, this particular song, Ghost Love Score, as the title suggests, had been recommended a number of times and somebody had said something in a comment yesterday and I thought, let me take a look at it. We'll park it for later. A lot of, a lot of people apparently look at this, this song. I'll get to it. And then I open up the lyrics, I watch the video, I listen to the song, and my agenda changed because it was clear that I was going to do this song tonight because this song completely spoke to me for various reasons. Various aspects of this song spoke to me. And so I decided that tonight we would take a look at Ghost Love Score and from here we would move on to a, a series of other songs that this starts the conversation on. Um, it is a challenge doing these uh, these lyrics, uh, and not because they're not good, but because I'm not good enough. But I'm going to try to do them justice as we take a, a, a look at this quite incredible performance from 2013 when most of us were just wee little, wee little sprogs, or maybe not, only seven years. That's maths. A man with a mighty organ and an epic opening. Just, I like this. Immediately like it. lady of the moment. Just before we talk about the lyrics, it makes me smile so much to see the onstage dynamic between this band. That little moment when the guitarist walks around the back and just makes physical contact with his bandmates is so joyful and so sweet and so human. And, and it speaks to me of a group of people that are really enjoying being on the stage together. And that isn't always the case with musicians. 
You know, the police famously fought pitched battles on the stage. Um, I, it makes me smile so much because it just speaks to the humanity of this band. As much as the, the words and the music and the vibe that you get from the documentary, that speaks to who this band is in a really charming way. So let's get into the lyrics as sung by that lady right there. We used to swim the same moonlit waters, oceans away from the wakeful day. So the images of water, which are continued into the center of the sea before the waking world. We used to exist together, swim together, play together. We used to be in love in the past. Moonlit waters speaks of night, it speaks of romance. Oceans away from the wakeful day speaks of the, again, speaks of that night time, that passions of the night, to get a little bit euphemistic and silly. And then we get this, this really interesting vocal treatment where Floor sings the top line, my fall will be for you, which provides a bracket and a context for the three lines that come below it. My love will be in you. If you be the one to cut me, I'll bleed forever. Those three lines are not delivered by the lead. They're delivered by, uh, it's not as clear on this live mix as it is on the single, which I also took a look at in preparing for this. They're done by a, 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 a choir. So to me, that speaks compositionally in a way that speaks to the narrative of my love for you is the context in which I vest my love in you and if you're the one that cuts me, I'll bleed forever. If somebody else cuts me, I'll heal. If anyone else cuts me, I'll heal. But if you, the one I love the most, the one in whom I have vested my love, if you cut me, I'll bleed forever. Now, in the context of a love in the past tense, that speaks of an art, of, a, of a writer, an artist, a person bleeding forever because of this deep wound of the loss of love. I did find myself wondering what it would sound like if, if the band did those three lines in the contrasting sort of male voice. Um, not my place really to tell Tomas how to compose music, but I did find it, it was, it was, I was not entirely sure if those lyrics were even present in this live mix. They're much clearer in the, in the album, um, mix on Spotify, but I really like this device of having Floor do this, this very operatic top line and that sort of ca choral counterpoint and this idea that that there is a person out there that can cut you so deeply that it will bleed forever. And that is the person who you love. Yeah, that speaks very much to the nature of, of both love and, and love lost. Watch this. How lovely is that? Just touching base.
We won't step on the solo. But let's look at the lyric. A siren from the deep came to me, sang my name, my longing. We know what the sirens are, right? The sirens are the the, the sirens are the temptation that 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 tempt sailors off the ship to their death. Um, you know, who was it that was lashed, lashed to the uh, to the mast so that he was was it Odysseus? So the siren came to me, sang my name, my longing. This woman that he loved was his muse, is what I'm getting from this. This woman was his muse. Her love for him inspired the songs that he still writes about that dream, about that, that, about that lost love. Once again, we've got a writer writing about writing, writing about the, the lyricist, the poet's desire to somehow encode into their words the essence of their feelings. And that sense that the songs themselves become worth everything I may ever be. Those, those songs themselves become his legacy. And they're all inspired this child, I think that this child, this creative child of this muse is the thing that will be born again. This thing that the siren brought to him, the first true love that came sitting, not singing, that's a typo, I'm sure, sitting on the shoulders of an angel that didn't care about love and loss. The muse was, the muse didn't care. I don't know. It's a very it's, it's very hard to penetrate a lyric like this when the lyric is deliberately non-expositional. This is not a lyric that is didactic in its nature. It's not telling me what it's about. It's asking me to invest myself in it and to find, if anything, my my meaning. I, I read a, an interview with Tomas who spoke specifically about his desire not to pin the butterfly the, the, to the card, not to, not to pin down meaning, not to define it so that we could define it ourselves, so that the emotion of it, the intent of it could inspire our own interpretation, which is, I guess, what I'm trying to do here. With a song like this, it becomes harder than with a lot of songs where idiomatically or stylistically, I'm more, more, more quickly able to penetrate. But I do feel like he's talking here about a love in the ghost love score, so definitely a love in the past tense that still serves as a muse even now, that even at the time when he's bleeding forever, he knows that the child will be born again. He knows that the muse will continue to inspire him to write songs like this, words like this. And then we get into this great compositional solo that reminds me a little bit of Rothery and Lifeson. It's very sparse. It's very spare. It's very, very tasteful solo, uh, echoing the, the, the melody line of the, of the song. This was one of the moments that sort of pulled me in to this song last night when I elected to change my mind and, and jump in here.
So this is a lovely symphonic moment that actually reminds me of the Moody Blues, Days of Future Past. It's got a very elegant, stylish, very evocative feel. And I love how he stays out of the eye line until it's time to play again. That's pure class, pure class. Here we go. What a moment, what an interesting verse. It reminds me, interestingly, of the, of, 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 of the final howl of the Invisible Man, Meridian song, that, that hear me, love me, or leave me be, that instinct when we are, when we're heartbroken, when we've, when, 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 when we feel betrayed, that instinct to say either either love me or or just leave me alone. That feels like like that rages in this verse. You've left me in the dark heart of the night. Okay, I've lost the path before me. I've you know, you're gone. I don't feel like I know where I'm going. But again, this is where I feel like the one behind will lead me the the muse the inspiration that you were will ultimately continue to act as a catalyst as an inspiration to me i'm getting here this idea in this song that not only is love the inspiration for great art but the loss of love is the inspiration for great art and ultimately the continuation of the pain of love is the inspiration for great art. So it seems like there's some lyrical changes in this version versus the one that's on, on the lyric sheet here. And it's quite interesting because, I mean, the lyric, take me, cure me, kill me, bring me home, that feels like that continuation of love me or leave me be. That I, I don't understand. I'm not able to penetrate just another loop in the hangman's noose. I don't believe she just did it. And I and and I don't know what I'm missing. It might be some kind of idiomatic translation that I'm I can't penetrate. It might be some classical or literary illusion. Tomas is very capable of that. That I'm is above my pay grade. Maybe you know answers on a postcard, please. I can't penetrate that. Take me, cure me, kill me, bring me home. Every way, every day, I keep on watching us sleep. Once again, I could be entirely wrong, but that feels like it either feels like we're we're alluding to 
the idea that our love is asleep or the memory of us being asleep together. I don't know. This is a this is a hard passage to pass. Musically, it's a fantastic package and the performance, the vocal performance. Whoa. So Floor's playing her instrument here, all of them. Wow. So that's the moment. That was the moment when I was watching this video last night where I thought I have to do this song. I'm sure there'll be howls of outrage at this next statement, but that was the moment where I was convinced by Floor. Not because I don't think she's got an amazing voice, not because I don't think she's not a fantastic singer, but that verse there was the moment where I saw her break out a little, something a little bit different, something a little bit raw, a little bit, a little, a little bit broken, a little bit rock and roll. And I love that moment of performance. I love her performance in the back end of this song. And, and this is the reason I decided to do this now, because it will lead on to other things, hopefully. But I also love the fact that Tomas here once again has come back at the end and he's given me redemption. It's right there in the word, redeem me into childhood. He's given me, he's given me hope. We start with the sin of Adam and Eve, which was knowing, the sin of self-awareness, the sin of being aware of their nakedness, I think, was the verse, was it not? <laughs> Forgive the adoring beast who adores you in your nakedness. I wonder, is that, does that, do those two lines link? I keep on watching us sleep. I relive the, the old sin of Adam and Eve, of you and me. Forgive the adoring beast. Okay, maybe maybe the way this has been typed, maybe the way it's structured has, has thrown me a bit of a curveball because I feel like I'm seeing here that this is a man remembering being with this woman. Physically, the physical act of being with this woman, not just the, 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 the love, but the lust, the passion, the nakedness, the sin of Adam and Eve. But then he gets into redemption. And he talks about how, for me, he's talking here about how love can ultimately redeem, can reset you to your childhood, to pre the sin of Adam and Eve, to pre the point where you were aware of your nakedness, to that point when you hadn't developed the shell. The advent of May, is it as simple as is, is it as simple as spring? Is it as complicated as May is the month in which he met this woman? I do not know. 
But all of this speaks to me of that idea of saying, ultimately, love, the continuing love, will serve to redeem me, to take me back to my innocent, to, to a more innocent place where love is pure. And the hope in this, this woman who has cut him so he'll bleed forever, I'll be there when you say. It says here, time to never hold our love. That, su that suggests to me that that is idiomatic, an idiomatic way of saying that there is no there is no end point. There is no ticking clock. I will continue to bleed and I will continue to hope and I will continue to be ready to be there when you say. Which makes this love unrequited and, and a love story incomplete. A sort of a, a tragedy, but a tragedy that ends in the hope. A, a tragedy that says I will be powered creatively by the muse that you were and that this moment served to be. But also, I will be hopeful that I'm still going to be there when you say, I still love you so much, I'm going to come back when you ask me to. And what a performance, what a vocal, what a, what a vocal performance this is. This was, this was the moment. If anybody asks, this was the moment where I, I was convinced, where I connected emotionally with this performance. This performer. Love it. Yeah. I'm a sucker for a love story. I'm a sucker for a tragedy. I'm an absolute sucker for redemption. And I'm always going to be drawn to a performance that contains that, that depth of emotional performance, that rock and roll howl, if you like. I, I, I've seen three Night, Night Wish songs for this channel. I've probably listened to another half dozen of them in doing my homework 
for future stuff. There is no question in my mind that the greatest show on earth is the best Nightwish song that I'm aware of. But this is my favourite. So far, this is my favourite. This is the one where I, I love the composition. I love the sense of these guys on stage. That moment where he touches base with his fellow musicians just moves me. And that performance, when, when Floor cuts loose, when she cuts loose, when she does stuff that you wouldn't see done at the opera, but you're only going to see done at the rock opera, that absolutely sold me. In the next couple of videos, if you'll come along and indulge me, I'm going to be looking at some other female vocalists. I'm going to be looking at other Nightwish female vocalists. I'm going to be looking at some videos that I was asked to react to with female vocalists. And I'm going to hope to introduce you to my favourite female vocalist in this ongoing conversation. And I think we'll talk some more about love and loss and redemption and heartbreak because they are the muse that power so much art, so much great art. And this is great art. And let's not forget, the drummer slips off his stool so that he doesn't mess with the lines of that beautiful symphonic moment. This whole band is so aware of the total experience that they're creating. I love it. I, I, I really... Might be a silly little thing, but those are the things that make a band special. And this is increasingly, obviously, a special band. Thanks for watching. I, I hope you still are. I hope that I haven't offended too many of you uh, too often. Um, thanks for watching. Keep the faith. Catch you next time.